Hi everyone. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create images, chemical structures using the 3D animation software Blender. And I'll walk you through the steps to create really cool looking 3D scenes like the one shown here. But before we get started, first what we'll need is a PDB file, which you can download on the internet through open source places like Academic Institution. The example I'll be using today is water. And then we'll get some pictures of background images, uh, in this case, a universe uh, shown here. And this is the picture I'll be using. So next, let's load the software. Uh, this is Blender 2.82. First, we'll need to install the Atomic Blender add-on. And what we'll do is just go to Edit, Preferences, and then Add-ons, and then search in the field for PDB, and you should see the uh, Atomic Blender add-on. Just check that box, and then hit OK and close the, the background there. And we also want to change to a Cycles Rendering Engine, so click the Rendering menu, and under Rendering Engine, go ahead and click the pull-down menu and select Cycles option. Now once we have that selected, we'll go ahead and click on the Layout menu tab there, and go back to the uh, Object menu, and then we want to delete that uh, default cube object by just click the Delete button on your keyboard, and click Shift and then A, then go to Mesh, and select the UV Sphere. And then it uh, has a UV sphere object, and we click on that and click tab and zoom in there. You can see the number of vertices there aren't that great, and there's a lot of uh, jagged edges here uh, that when we wrap the UV image on, it's uh, really going to create a pixelated type image. So we want to increase the number of vertices. So go ahead and delete that object, and then click Shift A again, and then go to Mesh, and then UV sphere. And what we're going to do now is go to uh, Edit and then uh, Adjust Last Option and then go ahead and select the segments and let's put 300 segments and 300 rings in there. And when we do that you can see the object then becomes much more smooth, there's a lot more vertices and we get a nicer UV uh, sphere that we can, uh, it won't be so pixelated when we add an image. Next click on the Materials Properties button and then we're going to add a new material to this sphere and if you take a look at the preview of the default material it's a diffuse white color and what we want to do is add a background image to this UV sphere. So next let's click on the Shadings tab option. And then we can see that default material is connected to the material's output here. Next what we want to do is add an image texture to the base color and the alpha of our default material. So go ahead and click Shift A and then click Texture and then add an image texture node here. And then what we want to do is connect the color of our image texture to the base color of our default material and then connect the alpha of our image texture to the alpha of our default material. And you'll see what you get is a kind of uh, blank purple color with no image is loaded here, so taking a look at the preview there. What we want to do is now open up an image in our image texture node, and then just go ahead and browse to the uh, image that we downloaded previously before we began, in this case the universe image, and go ahead and open image. And you can see that the image is now wrapped on the UV sphere here. And this really works for any image, so if you open up a new image uh, to a different one, in case, this case is a Milky Way galaxy, uh, it wraps really any uh, image on the UV sphere. So let's open up our default image again. And now we want to scale this sphere uh, larger to make a scene. So go ahead and type S8 and then hit enter. And you can see we really didn't cover the, the sun or the camera with that, and that's really the goal of this. We want to make sure that the camera and the sun are actually inside the sphere. So go ahead and switch to wire shading mode. And then what we're going to do is select the object, type S, and then just manually scale this to really cover the camera and the sun. And then in our wire framing mode, we just want to make sure that the camera and sun are inside the, the sphere there. And they are. Okay. So once we do that, then we can hide the sphere, so then we can really work on importing our PDB file. So next let's just go to the File, and then Import option. And then be sure to select the uh, PDB file here, so Atomic PDB. And then let's browse to our PDB file that we downloaded before we started. And then just open that PDB file. And you can see when we zoom in here that uh, a wire mesh molecule of water has been imported from the coordinates of our PDB file. So when we switch to render preview mode, you can see that uh, the default materials are this diffuse white and red colors for our water molecule. And what you'll also see here is there are a number of different objects for this PDB file that have been loaded in the scene view. And uh, just scrolling through, we see some oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms. If you select on the mesh here for the oxygen atom, the material for this oxygen atom is in this oxygen underscore ball here. And just looking at the preview, you can see it's just a diffuse red color here. And the same is true for the hydrogen atom as well. Looking at this hydrogen underscore ball material, uh, we get this really diffuse white color material. Not too exciting. We really want a glossy type image which really reflects our background. So let's go ahead and select the oxygen underscore ball again and click use nodes here. 
which allow us to really change the properties of our materials here. And again, we get this default diffuse material. Let's go into our shading mode here um, so we can really modify the properties of this uh, oxygen atom. And what we're gonna do is make this a glass material. So click on our surface mode, click glass, and then what you'll see here is now that the, the oxygen atom turns to a glassy type material. What we're gonna do is modify the roughness then to bring that down to about 0.1 so it's more transparent. And we also wanna change our IOR or index of refraction. Uh, we wanna make that 1.1. And so that'll really allow us to reflect the background in here. And you can see in the preview mode that uh, we get a lot more transparency uh, when we put these properties in. So now we wanna change the color back to a red color as a CPK for oxygen. And then uh, you can see in our rendering mode that we actually get this red atom now that is, has a glassy type uh, image. Next, we want to modify the hydrogen atoms as well. So let's go ahead and click on our hydrogen underscore ball material. And then we also want to use the nodes for this material as well. So go ahead and click use nodes button. And in this case, we want a really glossy type material. So this is really diffuse. It won't really reflect any of the oxygen material or any of the universe into the uh, hydrogen atoms here. And that's what we really want is this glossy type material. But we also want to have a white color as well. So we really would need a mixed node. So go ahead and select our principal node, delete that, and then type Shift A and go to Shader, and then add a mixed shader. And then click the shader to the surface, type Shift A again, and what we want to add is now a diffuse node. And then also we want to Shift A, go to Shader, and add a glossy node. And what we want to do is connect the uh, output of the diffuse node to the shader and the output of the glossy node to the shader. And what this does is really mix the two shaders together. So you get this kind of mixed diffuse glossy color here. We also want to change the roughness of the gloss of glossy to about 0.1 and it'll create more shiny color. So this is a much more shiny character and really reflects more of the background uh, in our hydrogen atoms. And by changing the face of our mixed shader, we can really determine the amount of uh, glossiness or diffuseness that is in this material. So let's set this to 0 0.8. That provides a good balance of glossiness, but also provides white color for our hydrogen atoms, so we know that they're hydrogen atoms. And you can see the background is reflected very nicely with these settings, and this will really give our final image that extra 3D appeal. So now let's go back to the layout menu, and next we want to orient our camera to frame the scene of the image. So let's just drag and select our, our camera here with the left click, and then type GX negative seven, then hit enter, and then type RZ negative 45, and then hit enter, and then type GY two, and then hit enter. And this gets the camera in the general direction of the water molecule. Then to fine tune that, what we wanna do is click view, and then select camera, and then active camera and that'll position the scene towards the camera. And then with the camera still selected, type RX, and then just manually position the camera so that the water molecule is in the center of the camera. Now what I'm gonna do is with a series of GY and GXs, just kind of position the, the water molecule so that it's really tight in the center of the, the camera angle, and uh, we can really zoom in on that water molecule. And so I'm gonna do a bit of final R, X to rotate along X axis, and it's really centered in the middle of this camera again. Next, we're gonna drag select the water molecule, and then type RZ, and then rotate it so we really get a profile view of the water molecule. And once we have the profile view selected, uh, what we wanna do is uh, bring the camera view in just a little bit closer and just really tee this water molecule up so that's really in the central frame and we're really focusing in on the water molecule here with a few GY and GXs. Okay, once we have the water molecule in the position of the camera view, next let's unhide the sphere that we created previously. And then zooming out, we can see that the, the water molecule is now in a scene where we have the background of our wrapped UV sphere that we created earlier. And you can see we get a lot of reflections on the water molecule as well. So now let's make sure that the UV sphere is selected and then type RZ and then manually rotate the sphere so we can change the background scene of the water molecule. And what we wanna do is orient the the scene so that you have a lot of the bright spots to where the sun would be facing. And this is really reflected in the hydrogen atoms here to where it looks like the sun's reflecting off of these. We also see a lot of the reds are reflected in the hydrogen atoms as well. And you can see the background through the transparent glass. So now that we have the scene in the right direction, let's do a quick render to see what the scene will look like with the current orientation. So first click on the output properties tab. And what we're gonna do is change the percent resolution down to about 15%. 
And then we're just going to go down and look at the other output properties, make sure we have RGBA selected, and then we're going to change our color depth from 8 to 16 bit, and then just make sure our compression is at 15%. So once that's all that selected, let's click on the render button and then click render image. You can see we get a quick low resolution image, and it takes about 20 seconds uh, for this to render. So at this point, you can really play with the settings and adjust the scene the way you'd like. And once you're ready to render a higher resolution image, let's go back to the output properties tab. And then let's just change the percent from 15% to 100%. So then let's go back to the render tab up top and then click the render image button. And then it's gonna render the, the image at a much higher resolution. So I'm gonna take a break and pause and then come back when this is completed rendering. Okay, our image is finished rendering. And you can see we get a much higher resolution image, which took almost seven minutes to render. The background scene we selected is really reflected in the hydrogen atoms, and the transparent glass material makes the background visible through the oxygen atoms. And so using this approach, we can create really interactive scenes where we can import 3D structures from a PDB file and have it really interact with the 3D environment in our scene. That concludes this tutorial. If you found this helpful, please like the video and feel free to provide comments below.